Hicks family. Today I'm going to be talking about how I lost my leg and the fact that it's been five years since the original accident that caused me to lose my leg. Five years ago, I was serving as a missionary with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and I was assigned to labor in Arizona for a period of 18 months. This is the story of how my mission cost me my leg. February 21st, 2018. I entered the MTC, also known as the Missionary Training Center, in Provo, and I started my mission to serve Jesus and to teach other people about the gospel of Jesus Christ. My experiences at the Missionary Training Center were amazing and I felt like it was such an amazing spiritual experience for me because I learned how to study the scriptures in a way that I never had before and I learned how the atonement of Jesus Christ applies to me in a way that I had never felt it before and I felt like Jesus really knew me individually and he knew every struggle I was going through and every roadblock that I had to be able to even serve a mission in the first place. Because of my mental health history, I had to have many interviews to be able to even serve a mission in the first place. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I did have to serve a mission because I feel like it was the perfect time for me to have to go through something like this and for me to have to lose my leg, I was very prepared for that to have to happen for, to me spiritually and faith-wise, I was very prepared for that to happen. March 3rd, 2018. I arrived in Arizona to serve my mission and to teach other people about Jesus Christ. Arriving in Arizona was amazing, but at the same time, it was hard because I was met with a mission president that didn't necessarily want to accommodate the fact that I had ADHD and dyslexia when I came into the mission and those things were written in my file and he didn't really want to deal with the fact that I was different. As a missionary, I performed many hours of community service, I taught others about Christ, I strengthened ward units, and enjoyed time serving in the temple. May 5th, 2018, I was hit by a car while riding to a dinner appointment and I was on my bike when I was hit by a car and my left ankle was smashed between the bike frame and the car and I ended up in the middle of a busy road and I remember not being able to get up and it being really scary because there was cars coming and I remember just thinking like I have to get out of the road like that was my number one priority of like I have to get up I have to get out of the road and I remember being like completely in shock of like what the heck just happened I remember wiggling and tugging at my ankle to free it and I finally freed my ankle and I remember my companion frantically on the phone calling up everyone she could going sister so and so just got hit by a car and kind of like freaking out that I had just been hit by a car. I got up limping on the left side and I was in a lot of pain on my left ankle and like my whole left leg. The little missionary me tried to give the driver of the car a Book of Mormon. And I remember trying to give the driver of the car a Book of Mormon because I was just trying to be a good missionary and talk to literally everyone and share the good news about Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what I did. I tried to give her a Book of Mormon. She declined, of course, but I tried anyway. So the only people we could find with a car at the time was the elders that were in our zone. And so the elders had to come and pick us up, my companion and I, and take our bikes on the back of their car so that we could go into the doctor's office and get my leg checked out for injuries. 
Because I had hit my head, the Instacare sent me over to the ER, and this was the first time in my life that I can even remember being in the emergency room. So I was very scared, and it was very alienating to have the first time being in like the hospital that I can remember was many, many miles from home, and my parents had no idea what had happened. They just had like a feeling that something had happened, but they didn't actually know what had happened until the next day because my mission leaders did not call my parents until the next day to even tell them that I had been hit by a car. So when I went to the ER, the ER doctor told me to be on crutches for a few days and to ice my ankle, keep it elevated, and then he said to go to a specialist doctor if it was not getting better within a few days. Now, a few days later, we had zone conference and the mission president's wife decided to take away my crutches and I was still in horrendous pain trying to wait there anything on my ankle and it was awful. I mean like they pretty much just told me like get back on the bike, go exercise, get back to work and they had this vibe that I was a lazy missionary which is not true at all. I was definitely not a lazy missionary because I wanted more than anything to be out there and it had been my dream for years to serve a mission and it had been my dream for years to do this thing to serve Jesus Christ and to serve in my church and to be a part of something bigger and better and outside of myself. On June 2nd, I was sent home early from my mission on a medical release and the story doesn't end there though. I went through walking boots, braces, in August of 2018, I had a nerve decompression surgery on my ankle and that was to try to negate or fix the nerve damage that had been done when the car hit me. And things went well for a few months and then they taped again. And by January of 2019, I was diagnosed with a condition called CRPS or complex regional pain syndrome. Complex regional pain syndrome is among one of the most painful diseases a human can ever experience. It's rated above kidney stones, it's rated above childbirth, it's rated above unprepared childbirth, so a natural childbirth even. I went through nerve blocks and medications and infusions of ketamine and infusions of lidocaine and I went through injections in my back, I went through injections under my knee, I went through so 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 much medical trauma and when I say medical trauma I mean like it really was very traumatic and part of the reason that I have PTSD is because of everything that I went through medically with complex regional pain syndrome. Complex regional pain syndrome is nicknamed the suicide disease. And I know that sounds really scary, but the reason that it's nicknamed that is because 30% of people with CRPS attempt suicide. It is so painful and so mind-boggling and mind-altering that many people with CRPS do consider committing suicide. And that is why many support groups exist. And if you need a support group, there is links down in the description down below. And if you're feeling suicidal, please, please, please check out the links down in the description down below to the suicide prevention hotline. You can talk to someone 24 seven, you can even text with them and they'll get you connected with a qualified professional. So for three and a half years, I went through mind-boggling, exploding pain. It was like having my leg stuck in a bucket of ice water constantly and not being able to take it out. And it was horrible, absolutely horrible. It was like having acid dripped all over my foot and stepping on glass and 
there's so many ways that I want to describe it that like I can't there's pain is it's pain so painful that words cannot fully do it justice in September of 2021 I made the difficult decision to amputate my leg and I had made this decision because I really felt like it was the best chance at hope that I had and I felt like everything that I had done up to this point had not been working to save my leg and it was time for it to go. We had developed a toxic relationship between myself and my foot and it was time for it to go. And I had a neighbor who also went through an amputation for the same condition a few months before I did with the same team of doctors. And so I went through it having someone else to talk to and I think that made it a lot less scary to have someone else to talk to and someone else to know what I was going through. Since the amputation and revision only somewhat worked, my doctor started looking into other options and other alternative treatments for CRPS and something that could get me back into my prosthetic leg a lot more than I was using it. I had a revision done on my leg because I had a large neuroma and the neuroma didn't take care of the phantom pain and so he started looking into a treatment called bisphosphonate. So bisphosphonates are a drug that are used in Italy to treat CRPS and the doctor set up a experimental study to give a drug called pamadronate to his patients with CRPS. And I was one of the first patients that he has with CRPS to receive this treatment. And it's an IV infusion that you have to do like every couple months. Once you get the first boosters, like first few treatments into you, you can do it like every month or like every couple months. And that's what we've been doing. And it's actually gotten me back into my prosthetic leg and it's given me the miracle of having a resemblance of my young adult life back. And it's an absolute miracle to have my young adult life back. I've been able to wear my leg out on dates with my new boyfriend, and I've even been able to go bowling with my leg on, and to have a date, and to have, like, for a few hours, a resemblance of something normal. And for five years, I have longed to do something like that, to do something normal. And if you told me, if you told me like two years ago that I would be able to go out and do something normal with my boyfriend, I probably wouldn't have believed you because CRPS is so incredibly painful and when you're in the middle of it, it feels like there's no way out. I met my new boyfriend while we were playing in a Pokemon tournament a for the Pokemon card game and I just happened to be wearing my leg that night because I had been working very hard in physical therapy and I had been working very hard with this drug Pamadronate from Italy with my doctor and I was able to wear my leg for the duration of a couple hours for the event. I am so incredibly grateful to my team of doctors who was willing to research CRPS or complex regional pain syndrome and who was willing to dive in and spend hours just pounding out a solution to the problem that I was facing. And I, from the bottom of my heart, I thank them for the things that they've done to give me my life back. I'm so grateful that I'm at the point that I am where I can walk a little bit and I can like go out in the yard and help with raking for a few minutes and do all of these amazing things that I never thought I'd be able to do again. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. I know it was a long one, but thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video all the way through because it means a lot to me as the creator that you're spending your busy schedule and your time with me. If you'd like to see related videos to this one, click the links down in the description down below and you'll be able to find other videos related to this one. If you would like to see another One Footed Phoenix video, click over here and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you! Bye!